the world, visions and revelations have captivated the attention of people from all walks of life. The places where they occur become a magnet, attracting millions of believers and also non-believers, curiosity seekers and vision chasers, who rush to every place where it is alleged that the Blessed Virgin Mary is giving messages. One such place is a small, remote village in the mountains of Bosnia-Herzegovina called Medjugorje. The word Medjugorje is translatable as the light between the hills. Medjugorje was once famous for growing tobacco vines and fruit, but today, according to unofficial reports, more than 26 million people have visited this village over the past 16 years. By 1984, Medjugorje had no hotels or boarding houses. It had just one bar, and the village's only public lavatory consisted of three sheds with doors that did not shut between three holes in the ground. This is the village today, with its rows of hotels, bars and shops. This beautiful village, situated in the middle of a war zone, has been untouched by war. Some say the hand of God was its protector, or moreover, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Others have different theories. According to some, Medjugorje is a mask for a shocking story of greed, lies and religious manipulation. Indeed, many contest that Medjugorje is the biggest hoax in the history of the Roman Catholic Church. It was June 1981 when six children claimed to have witnessed an apparition of Our Lady. Roman Catholic Michael Davis has written many books on Catholic issues, and his latest book, Medjugorje, A Warning, discourages other Catholics from giving any credence to the alleged visions at Medjugorje. There are two girls. Uh, one was named Ivanka Ivankovic, and the other was called Miriana Dragicevic. And they went outside uh, the, the village of Medjugorje actually to smoke. Just why the children started to climb the hill just east of Medjugorje, known as Podberdo, is a matter of some dispute. Questioned at the time, they claimed to be tending sheep. Yet later, when questioned by the Bishop of Mostar, Bishop Zarnich, one of the girls, Ivanka, was reminded that she had sworn an oath and that perjury was a sin. She quickly changed her story and admitted that they went up the hill to smoke. And when they returned home, uh, probably just for a joke, they, they told uh, their family that they'd had a vision of Our Lady who had said to them she would, that she would appear three more times, that she would appear on July the 1st, July the 2nd, and July the 3rd. Uh, some of their other friends uh, jo joined in, so eventually there were six of these so-called seers. The other four friends were Biska Ivankovic, Ivan Dragicevic, Maria Pavlovich, and Yakov Kolo. In 1983, uh, I was visited by two friends of mine who wanted my wife, who happens to be Croatian, to translate a book of messages which it was claimed had come from Our Lady uh, into English. So I asked her to read me a few of these messages before she started the work. And uh, they were so absolutely trite that I said to her not to waste a second of her time uh, on them because I just couldn't believe that they were authentic. This, of course, was long before, I suppose, 99% of people had ever heard of Medjugorje. Well, the, 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 the very content of the messages, I, I was a primary school teacher for 30 years, and uh, any, any nine-year-old primary school child could have uh, put these messages together. That, that there's n you know, n nothing in them whatsoever to suggest that uh, they came from Our Lady, and most of them, there was no point whatsoever in, in, in her passing them on to people because they were so obvious that everyone would know them anyway that you know that she wanted more or less people to love each other help old ladies across the road and be kind to of kittens that sort of thing Jozo Zovko was a Franciscan priest and pastor of St. James's Parish in Medjugorje on June the 27th 1981 three days after the first alleged apparition was reported Father Jozo was on his way home from a retreat he had conducted in northern Croatia. When he finally reached Medjugorje, Jozo was stunned by the size of the crowds. People from all over Yugoslavia had heard about the children and converging on this small village, 
by car and foot in their thousands. Were these apparent apparitions the result of either a communist plot to discredit the church or drugs brought in from Sarajevo by Mirjana, who was known in the village at the time as an outsider? My original hypothesis about the children themselves was that it was a joke that got out of hand, that these were the punks in the village and they were playing a joke and the priest took it over and by the time the, all these crowds arrived, the kids got scared and they needed somebody to let them off the hook and the priest left them off the hook. At the time, the villagers felt that the apparitions were hallucinations under the influence of drugs. Michael Jones has been an outspoken critic of Medjugorje for many years. His book, Medjugorje, The Untold Story, has caused outrage from followers of Medjugorje, but has been welcomed by certain members of the Vatican. Medjugorje, The Untold Story, is openly sold in Rome. It is like a drug. It's like an addiction. It's like an addiction. You get, uh, you get, you feel that uh, this is you have some direct connection with the beyond which contradicts scripture. In scripture we're told we live by faith and not by seeing in this world. In the next world we will see God, in this world we cannot see God. But that's hard. So instead of living this hard life according to faith, we want these feelings. We want good feelings. And we go to a place like this and this lady who's just talked to the Blessed Mother, she talks to us and she makes us feel good. Well, we become addicted to those good feelings. And after a while, Maybe this apparition doesn't give it to us anymore. We want a bigger, a bigger jolt, a, a new message, a new seer. It's just like a drug. The old drug wore off. The old dosage wore off. Now we need new things. There are people in the United States that chase after apparitions, one after another. It's an addiction. It, they need help. They need a 12-step program to, to break themselves to this. Transcripts of Father Yozo's first interviews with Mayana may indicate substance abuse. In the transcripts, Mayana is quoted as stating, as if we were drugged, and for that reason we would see the gospel. The word gospel refers to the Blessed Mother. The series of interviews conducted from June the 27th to July the 1st of that year by Father Yozo capture the children in a number of inconsistencies, absurdities and contradictions. By June the 30th, the conversations were frequently interrupted by the children's laughter. Perhaps the children knew that the game was up. Father Yozo seemed to be on the verge of sending them home to their parents with a good telling off. But quite mystifyingly, instead of calling a halt to the apparitions, he suggested to the children that they bring the gospel into the Church of St. James. If you look at the transcripts of the original interviews and the description of what happened during the first days, a huge number of people for this area, considering that it's just this area, showed up uh, when the children announced the apparitions. And I think the kids got scared. I think that they, 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 they touched a nerve and they didn't understand how big the reaction was going to be. And at that point, that's, I think, when they started looking for someone to get them off the hook. And I think that's when uh, Jozo Zovko stepped in and brought it into the church because I think he, uh, it, between when he brought them into the church and when the first apparition took place, uh, uh, Tomislav Vlasic came back from Rome and I think they talked about it and decided that it would be good for them if they brought it into the church. I think they saw an opportunity. Shortly before Jozo Zovko was imprisoned by the communists, Tomislav Vlasic, a Franciscan priest and longtime colleague of Jozo Zovko, was called in as spiritual advisor to the children. Vlasic, at the time, was stationed in the parish of Chapelina, a town 20 minutes drive from Medjugorje and 70 miles southwest of Sarajevo. He'd been acting as a delegate for Croatia one month before the alleged visions and attending a charismatic conference in Rome. At the meeting, a nun and a priest prayed over him and stated they had a vision of Father Vlasic surrounded by a great crowd. And Father Vlasic was also told that God would send his mother to him. One month later, the ramblings of six children seemed to fulfill these emotional prophecies. However, according to another Franciscan priest who had attended these charismatic prayer groups, they were led by Yozo himself. In fact, this priest, Marian Peha, stated that Yozo had become famous throughout Bosnia for these charismatic groups. Peha expressed his disgust at the manipulative atmosphere. Marian Peha said that he, he and, he and um, 
Vlasic were famous throughout all of Bosnia and Herzegovina for conducting charismatic, uh, charismatic prayer group, sensitivity session, combination things. It's basically uh, exercises where you attempt to break down someone's inhibition. So some, one of them is called blind milling, where you, uh, you close your eyes and you walk around the room and then you grab a hold of someone and you try to relate to the person. Now, normally you don't want people touching you, you know? So what they're trying, they're manipulating people by breaking down their inhibitions. And what you have here is a combination, not only this secular psycho uh, sensitivity technique combined with charismatic prayer that makes it even more potent in terms of a way of manipulating people. According to Peha, some good friends of his attended these meetings and emerged entirely different people. Some of them would start talking in tongues and many were admitted to hospitals or even mental institutions following their experiences at charismatic conferences. Peha disconnected himself with charismatic meetings and stated that Jozo Zovko was experimenting with an explosive mixture of charismatic prayer and sensitivity training. These auto-suggestive techniques have now been banned in many countries. Could these techniques have been used to manipulate the minds of the children? We know the kids were manipulated, okay, because Maria Pavlovich said in her letter that she was pressured to make that statement by uh, Father Vlasic, okay? We know they've been manipulated. As for the charismatic movement, people tell me, ah, it's just the Franciscans against the seculars. I say, no. It's always been a case of charismatics versus the rest. And as for charismatics, I remember I wrote to Frank Duff. Now, he founded the Legion of Mary, a most experienced man. He got a standing ovation when he entered the hall at Vatican II. Uh, I wrote to him saying that the Legion of Mary, this was 30 years ago, the Legion of Mary in, in the West Indies or some of the islands was very strongly charismatic. And I thought this was harmful. And he wrote back, I've got the letter still. He wrote back saying that in his opinion, the charismatic renewal movement was one of the most dangerous things in the church today. I think they saw a window of opportunity. I think that, uh, I think that there were lots of reasons that they would latch on to something like this. The main, the main one being their battle with the bishop to retain control over these parishes. Medjugorje falls under the Diocese of Mostar. The Bishop of Mostar at the time of the alleged apparitions was Bishop Pavel Zanich. He formed a commission to investigate them. This commission originally consisted of four members, but in 1982 was extended to include theologians and psychiatrists to a total of 15 members. The conclusion of this commission in 1985 was that there was no evidence whatsoever of supernatural phenomena at Medjugorje. Michael Jones joined up with a British documentary crew when he returned to Bosnia nine years after publishing his first book. His first port of call was the Croatian town of Split on the Adriatic coast, a popular holiday resort before the outbreak of civil war. His purpose, to further uncover the influences of events at Medjugorje and the motivations of those involved. letter was pretty clear uh, 
what type of story I was supposed to write, basically a pro Medjugorje story. And the, the story, I think, was already written by a lot of the, the Catholics in America who did not like the bishops in the way they blamed the bishops for everything that was wrong in the church in the United States. And so the story I was supposed to write was the, the six good little children and the big bad bishop. So I got over here and I started looking around. I actually met with the bishop and I began to realize that that wasn't the true story. Castel Novi. Castel Novi. Uh, 300 meter. Jones found the retired Bishop Zarnich residing in a humble two-bedroomed house on the outskirts of Split, overlooking the Adriatic Sea. Zarnich, unlike some, has not tried to profit from the potential rewards to be reaped from supporting Medjugorje. Unlike a number of bishops around the world who have benefited greatly from their endorsement of Medjugorje. One such bishop, in particular, now owns his own TV station in the United States. And they kept trying to say, that, are you going to do something for Medjugorje or are you going to do something against Medjugorje? You know what I mean? So it kept going back and forth. I mean, part, part, of, the, part of the problem may be the language. I mean, French isn't my native language, it's not his either. So. That's where it stands. Basically, he says that he's got to get to Mass at 6 o'clock tonight, and that he's uh, busy. During the Second World War, he was a Japanese prisoner of war held in an internment camp in Singapore. Today, Father Hugh Thwaites is a Jesuit priest who wrote a letter to Bishop Zarnich, curious as to the official church position on Medjugorje. Bishop Zarnich replied with a letter stating that these so-called visions are the fruit of fabrication, fraud and disobedience to the church. I was delighted, I was thrilled. and. Uh... I thought, this is what I've been wanting, this is what I, just what I wanted. And uh, it was such an important document, I wanted to have it photocopied, you see, and uh, reproduced. I think I didn't even entrust it to the post. I thought it might get lost on the post or the devil might do something. No, I, I was delighted. It was really just what the church needed, I thought. Something authoritative from the only person in the world who would give an authoritative judgment, namely the local bishop. In his letter, Bishop Zarnich also asked that Father Thwaites publish his declaration, which was included in the envelope. He said it was a fraud. The kids lied to him repeatedly until finally he said, this cannot be the Blessed Mother. And uh, the statement in 87 was, you know, saying, the sign that you promised has appeared. It's the silence. You're not here. And he said, people who put uh, words in the mouth of the Blessed Mother deserve the lowest part of hell. Extreme strong statement, and that was followed then by the bishop's statement saying that there was nothing supernatural. So he's never, he's never, I mean, I sure, a bishop would love to have the Blessed Mother appear in his diocese, but he never changed his mind. He was always cautious. This official statement from Bishop Zarnich accuses the Franciscans of hurrying forward before the church's judgment. It also draws attention to prohibited preached private revelations. On the 23rd of May, 1985, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith sent to the Italian Bishops' Conference a letter asking bishops to make efforts to reduce organized pilgrimages from Italy to Medjugorje. However, despite all of this, a multitude of promoters at Medjugorje ignore the authority of the Catholic Church along with the thousands of pilgrims that converge on Medjugorje each year, although many pilgrims are not aware of this. Maybe they didn't know what the bishop had said, but I think that many people don't realize 
the authority that God has given a bishop. A bishop does govern his area uh, with a divine authority. And it's very dangerous to uh, go against one's bishop. It, it was very difficult at times of heresy uh, in England at the time of the Reformation. But uh, the bishop there, he's in full communion with the Holy Father, and he enjoys Rome's approval, and so he has to be obeyed. And I, I will, I'd be very frightened to disobey a bishop. If people snap their fingers at the decisions of the bishops, well, that's their problem. How Catholic are they? The people of God, from the time of Moses onwards, have been the people who have obeyed the legitimate authority set over them by God. They are being misled by the Franciscans. In what way? Well, the only reason they're coming here, as opposed to uh, the local church where they live, is because some people are claiming that the Blessed Mother is appearing here. Now, the Catholic Church has stated officially that they're is nothing of a supernatural character. That was the statement of the bishops. That means that the Blessed Mother is not appearing here. Okay, so it's kind of a double game that we're playing here. You know, we're trying to, we're using the spirituality of the Catholic Church to draw people here, but we're ignoring the authority of the Catholic Church that uh, makes this whole, makes all of these pieces fit together. Yes, but I should think the average person who goes to Medjugorje doesn't know, for example, that uh, all pilgrimages there are forbidden. No one is allowed to organize a pilgrimage there. The, the people who really are running a kind of Medjugorje industry, they, 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 I think they make sure that the people they take out there, and whose money they're taking, don't know anything about this. And it's very hard to get, to get these facts across to people because the Catholic press in this country is very reluctant to print anything critical of Medjugorje because they make so much money from advertising the pilgrimages. In Medjugorje, the alleged visionaries have become public figures. According to some, they play to the crowd, acting like celebrities. They produce visions to order and have managed to do so for almost 17 years. These people represent religion as I want it to be. Religion with, uh, it's like Jesus without a cross, it's like instant gratification. It's, Medjugorje is consumerism, it's religious consumerism, that's what it is. We put our money down at the travel agent and we get a religious experience. The largest Catholic tour operator in the United States resided in Huntingdon, California. The Queen of Peace Ministry was run by Peter K. Miller. The Queen of Peace Ministry offers a holiday in Medjugorje, starting from $955 up to $2,565. In addition, Peter Miller offered for an extra $500 a private meeting with the alleged visionary Ivan, who would introduce you to Our Lady. The colorful brochure promotes the alleged signs and wonders of Medjugorje, spinning suns and rosary beads that turn to gold. The brochure also includes statements which are alleged to be direct quotes from Pope John Paul II endorsing Medjugorje. In February of 1995, the Los Angeles Times reported on a civil case in the Los Angeles County Court. Peter K. Miller, as the owner of the Queen of Peace Ministry, was cautioned in court for placing religious pictures on stationery and other promotional materials, leaving the consumers with the impression that his tours were under the auspices of the Catholic Church. Miller was further accused of violating certain provisions of the Business and Professions Code relating to travel promotion, and was ordered by the court to display a statement on his materials that his business was not an official representative of the Catholic Church. A Los Angeles judge froze the assets of the Queen of Peace Ministry two years later, auditors finding that $1.4 million had mysteriously vanished from the company's accounts, the balance of just $16,000 remaining. Peter K. Miller received $200,000 in payments from the Queen of Peace Ministry between January 1996 and January 1997. 
Miller has since fled the United States amid a federal investigation into his affairs and is now believed to be hiding in England. It is alleged that Miller owns property in Medjugorje, which he still rents out to unsuspecting pilgrims, and he's been defended in his actions by tour operators in Medjugorje. His actions including conning his customers out of their money and even on occasion leaving them stranded in foreign countries. Yeah, we're talking about widows, aren't we? Maybe we're talking about orphans too, but we're certainly talking about widows. We're talking, we're talking right now about the most, the most vulnerable people in the Catholic Church right now. The people who have a tough time understanding what's going on, the people who have been sort of pushed aside, the people who are old, the people who are on fixed incomes, women for the most part, and these are the people who are being exploited in this situation. The little ones, you know, there's a passage in the Bible where it says it would be better to have a millstone uh, tied around your neck and have you thrown into the ocean than to cause scandal for little ones. And I think that we're talking about scandal for little ones. We're talking little ones, meaning people who have a tough time understanding what's going on. We asked a friend of Yozo Zovko and author of books on him, Charles Toy, to better explain what was going on. Oh, uh, the, the Franciscans are in complete disagreement. They're in complete disobedience to the Vatican. There's no question. Yeah. They, there's no question. Out of the 54 di of Mosbah diocese, out of the 54 dioceses, mm -hmm. the Franciscans had 54 when the bishop was uh, established. Yeah. Right now, they've turned over four. Yes, the bishop has four dioceses. Of the four dioceses, only two he has control of. The, 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 the Franciscans are a church unto themselves. This is the town of Chapelina, now devastated by the Civil War. It was host to some of the most fervent fighting in Bosnia-Herzegovina. But beneath this conflict lay a more subtle conflict surrounding St. Francis Church in Chapelina. During the Pope's visit to Sarajevo, the anger of the Franciscans here was set off by the Vatican's decision to replace the Franciscan priests with secular priests, appointed by the present Bishop of Mostar, Bishop Perich. The main entrance of this church has been bricked up by the parishioners and the Franciscans in defiance of Bishop Perich and the Vatican. Privately, many say that this conflict goes beyond mere rivalry over St. Francis Church, but revolves around another Franciscan-run local religious institution, the controversial and money-spinning shrine at Medjugorje, just five miles north of Chapelina. During his visit to Sarajevo on this occasion, Pope John Paul II refused to visit Medjugorje. His reservations attributed in part to the abduction of Bishop Perich in 1995 from his parish in Mostar shortly after his appointment by the Pope. They came down in a huge crowd, placards, blowcards, everything. After the demonstration, they broke into his residence, the bishop's residence. Yeah. They took him and kidnapped him. They beat him up tore his hassock and ripped off his cross. They held him for five hours hostage in an automobile. It took the uh, mayor of Mostar, yeah. who was a U was appointed by the UN, to get the UN troops down there to rescue him. Now, any time the Franciscans could have stopped that, but they didn't. I mean, this is a medieval mentality. How can you do that to a bishop? After visiting the former bishop, Bishop Zanich, E. Michael Jones traveled to the war-torn city of Mostar to visit the present bishop, Bishop Perich. I said, uh, who's in control of the money here? And he said, I don't know. So he's, he's the, uh, the diocese, he's the authority in terms of charity, Catholic charity for this diocese, and he doesn't know where the money's going. So where's the control here? Where's where's the control of who gets what? How could you not have a situation where people? I mean, given human nature, how could you not have a situation where people are skimming skimming money off themselves? And who knows where it's going? Pleasure for me. Oh, I'd like to. I'd like to. When they are building their their uh, uh, three three million dollar uh, uh, new convent for the nuns, which they built there, yeah. they built a new seminary in Zagreb and they refinished the outside and the inside of that church at the cost of millions of dollars. Where is all this? Oh, stop there. 
Where's all this finance come from? Where's all the what? The finance come from to do what? Where do you it? think? Magic Aria! If Magic Aria is financing that whole thing for them. I don't believe this. Oh, yes. Listen, all, <laughs> of, the, all of the Catholic Church in Bosnia yeah. is in under the control of the, Med of the Franciscans from Moscow on down to Split. Uh, Bishop Parrish has stated repeatedly, just stated in a letter, that there are all sorts of irregularities here, uh, priests here without faculties, buildings getting built without permission, nobody knows where the money's going, the order is in rebellion against the church. No, please, please God, I, I'd never do anything like that that goes against the teaching of the local bishop. Really. People have to have a reverence, I think, for the success of the apostles. And it may be pretty stupid and pretty weak. Doesn't matter. If he tells you to do something and it's not sinful and it's within his rights, you should do it. The object of the exercise is, is holiness. And I don't see how anyone can uh, be trying to be holy if they don't value the virtue of obedience. Our Lord said to St. Margaret Mary, I think, that there was no sin more dangerous for a religious than disobedience. Medjugorje may have caused disobedience and disorder within the ranks of the Catholic Church, but recently the tables would seem to be turning. Hardcore cult followers of Medjugorje have stated that the Franciscans now consider the alleged seers embarrassments. And Charles Toy, who has visited the village over 20 times and who arranges many excursions to Medjugorje from the United States, has also made statements about Ivan, principally that while he preaches to pilgrims about fasting on bread and water and living humbly, he does not practice what he preaches. His choice of transport in Medjugorje is certainly less than humble. Mother Angelica is the founder of the Eternal World Television Network based in Birmingham, Alabama. It has been confirmed to us by creditable sources that Mother Angelica cancelled a planned program featuring Ivan on the grounds of inconsistent material. She has, over many years, broadcast a number of programs endorsing the so-called miracles at Medjugorje. One such alleged miracle that is commonly reported is that of the lighting of this cross. The cross is located at the top of Mount Crucifixa, which is a mountain directly behind the church of St. James in Medjugorje. Mount Crucifixa stands some 1,400 feet and boasts a zigzagging path of treacherous, jagged rocks which people old and young are encouraged to climb. Despite warnings from their doctors, many pensioners still climb the path where the myth goes that no one can be harmed as a heavenly breeze carries walkers to the top. Left largely unpublicized, however, are the countless injuries and fatalities resulting from this climb. But from top there is two Are policemen. You? They will now phone down. And they will bring the stretcher. Any doctor or nurse? Yeah, right there. Go ahead, will you son? And what are the lighting of the large concrete cross at night and the millions of photographs like this one sold in the shops of Medjugorje documenting an apparent miracle? Um, Bishop Herrick himself has said in his recent document, Criteria for Discerning Apparitions, that there is no fact, argument or miracle that can prove the authenticity of Medjugorje. Photographic experts have explained the light as being the result of a double exposure, which stands well when you consider that none of the people in the photograph appear to have noticed this apparent miracle. And this photograph, where its perspectives and scale to be accepted, would be either the result of a scratched negative or else a 50-foot woman. Some people have other theories about the alleged signs at Medjugorje. Just as one whiff of crack 
can give some people a cocaine addiction for life, so one touch of spiritual consolation of demonic origin can give some people an undying craving for more of the same. After my experiences here now, especially talking to some of the people who have had some intimate contact with this, these people are telling me that there, there is a definite occult element involved in Medjugorje, that the kids are seeing something, that they are getting messages, and the messages are occult. They're compatible with the occult. The first message that uh, appeared after the Yugoslavian bishops made their statement, the Blessed Mother said, you have to turn positives into negatives. And then this one person here opens the book, and there it is, one of these occult books, and it's right there. The chapter heading is called Turning Positives into Negatives. Now, this guy said the Blessed Mother never, never uses vocabulary like this in the Bible. This is all New Age occult vocabulary. I was talking to one priest, and he talks about uh, his experiences with the New Age movement here. He's, a, he's uh, uh, collected a whole library of New Age books that people have brought here. And the whole point of the New Age movement is to create another Jesus. Another Jesus. In other words, a Jesus that's compatible with the way we want him to be, rather than us being compatible with the way he wants us to be. And there's always a danger of this other Jesus, and that's a, it's a very real danger here. St. John of the Cross warns us strongly against spiritual gluttony. He says, that we should try to resist spiritual sweetness and never on any account seek it. If it comes from God, then as soon as we're aware of it, we have already received the grace he intends to give us. God is not displeased when on receiving his gifts, we at once turn away from the gift to regard the giver. He wants us to serve him out of love and not as mercenaries. I think this is the devil's strategy when it comes to Medjugorje, in other words, Put the people in a situation where they, come, they become so attached to this drug that they will choose the drug over the Catholic Church founded by Jesus Christ to guide them to heaven. And that, if the devil can do that, he's won. So, just as mothers warn their children against experimenting with drugs, so Holy Mother Church warns us against all apparitions and messages that, not have, been, that have not been authenticated by the Church. They may prove to be of demonic origin, and healing them may lead to spiritual addiction. We Catholics have to be satisfied to live our life here in the darkness of faith. If we see a light that does not emanate from Rome, we should turn away from it. We should not forget our mother's oft-repeated warning, never take sweets from strangers, never go along with strangers, never even listen to strangers. All you will ever need to have, all you will ever need to know, you'll get from your mother, from me, who am the bride of Christ. So, really, is the story a little way riding hood all over again, but lived out in a world of spirits. Or perhaps I should more appropriately say, is the story of Adam and Eve. Good people, guileless people, wanted to know more than they should. I think that's it. Great danger. Great danger. Within a few years of Lourdes, I read somewhere there were 60 different apparitions of Our Lady in France, all of them demonic. One of the things I find very striking is, is that, um, uh, going back to the apparitions at Lourdes, which were approved by the church, that um, St. Bernadette's brother took a small toy from a pilgrim who was visiting Lourdes. And in fact, she was so horrified that he had actually made some gain, and, he, and she asked him to return the toy. And when you actually compare that to the lifestyles of the Sears, who were brought up in Medjugorje, who are now incredibly wealthy, even by Bosnian standards, um, it doesn't tie in at all with, with you know, um, what has happened with genuine Sears in the past, like, as I say, like the Bernadette at Lourdes or the children at Fatima. When you think of, of St. Bernadette, she was so humble, or even more, if you like, St. Catherine de Bure, no one knew she was the person until she was dying, really. The children of Fatima have never been known to tell a lie. The virtue that these people have shown, really, Sister Lucia have, and, and the other two little children, it's very moving, their virtue. That's what 
and, and the others, uh, St. Bernadette, the most lovable saint, who everyone wants to imitate in her humility. And you're not moved in that way by the, by the seers of Medjugorje. At the beginning, when the kids would fall down to have the apparition, they would just start talking. And everybody could hear what they were saying to the Blessed Mother. Then one of them found a, a book on Lourdes, and they heard that uh, uh, Bernadette of Lourdes did not do it this way, that she moved her lips and no sound came out. So then after they read that book, they stopped, they stopped uh, making sounds and they did it that way. Dr. James Paul Pandarakalam has been to Medjugorje as an investigator and pilgrim. He believes that the Virgin Mary is appearing there. In his book, Like a Heavenly Breeze, Dr. Paul rules out manipulation and psychogenic aphonia as possible explanations for the alleged seer's behavior, on the grounds that while their lip movements appear as if they have auditory control of their voices, no voice can be heard by those watching. This is the basis of Dr. Paul's argument, and he has stated that were somebody to disprove this point, then the children, in his opinion, would be frauds deserving of exposure. This episode was recorded in 1996 in Aylesford, England. Ivan is seen conversing with the Blessed Mother. Once amplified, it is revealed that Ivan's voice is, in fact, audible. The children's manipulation was exactly the hypothesis E. Michael Jones was focusing on when he drove to Yozozovko's monastery to confront the man who is believed by many to be one of the key manipulators of the so-called seers next to Tomislav Vlasic. And according to the Medjugorje centers in England and America, Yozo has become a godlike figure and moreover a more prominent religious leader than even Pope John Paul II himself. The people at these Medjugorje centers are prepared to follow the word of Yozo, even though it contradicts the Holy Father. Yozo Zovko, when asked by E. Michael Jones if he was a charismatic, claimed to be unfamiliar with the term. Yeah, are you a charismatic? Yes, I'm a charismatic child. <laughs> what does that mean for you? That you pray in tongues and were baptized by the, in the Holy Spirit. Sorry, that you? Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Glossolalia. But later in the interview, openly discuss the subject of charismatic prayer groups. Yeah. Uh, such kind of prayer groups, the charismatic ones, have never been developed in this in this part of our church. There has no there no been any circumstances uh, it, for developing. Never, never One of the priests have tried in Zagreb, but it has never been developed in that sense. When asked about Marian Pejar, the Franciscan who had disconnected himself with Zovko's prayer groups many years before, Jozo Zovko denied all knowledge of Pejar. Does, uh, does, do you know someone by the name of Marian Pejar? Znate li nekoga ko se zove Marijan Pehar? Ne. Ko je Marijan Pehar? Who is he? He was a Franciscan priest. Bio je Franjovac. He was. Pehar's own response was to refer to Zovko as a liar. When Father, when Father Zovko was in prison, wasn't Father Vlasic in charge of the parish? Zar on nije bio zadužen za žup kad ste vi bili u zatvoru? Ne, ali pred sami kraj ja sam bio župnik i u zatvoru. Mislim, nije on preuzio župu, posle mene je preuzio pera. He hasn't taken over the parish. Tomislav Vlasic presented himself in a letter to the Pope on May the 13th of 1984, stating, I am Father Tomislav Vlasic, the one according to divine providence who guides the seers at Medjugorje. Was it a case of Zovko not wanting to admit association with a Franciscan with such a dark past? This dark past came to light in November of 1984, when the then Bishop Zanich received a mysterious letter from Germany. It was from a person who claimed to have worked in Zagreb with a Franciscan priest who was then associated with Medjugorje. The letter further disclosed to Zanich that the woman who had written the letter was claiming to have had a child by this Franciscan. 
the woman was requesting that the bishop intervene to persuade the father of her child to help support the upbringing of the child. What was baffling to Bishop Zarnich was that there was no return address on the letter and it was signed only with the woman's Christian name, Manda. first apparition was living in a monastery in Zagreb. Two Franciscan priests were also dwelling there at the time, one of whom she claimed was responsible for her pregnancy. That Franciscan was Tomislav Vlasic. Vlasic had been secretly sending letters to Manda, begging her not to reveal his name, offering her a bribe of $300 and a dictionary. When confronted in person by Bishop Zarnich, Vlasic did not deny that he was the father of the child. Manda stated that during her pregnancy, she often prayed that she would die in giving birth, as the shame of lying after 18 years as a nun was unbearable. Manda was also shocked that Vlasic was appointed spiritual advisor to the alleged seers. Manda now lives in Germany, where she brought up her son, Tomo, alone. Michael Davis quotes another case of an ex-Franciscan priest involved with the six seers. He gave the case uh, of an ex-Franciscan priest whose name was Evitza Vago, and on the specific orders uh, of the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, he was expelled from the Franciscan religious order for seducing a nun. Uh, if I can quote what Bishop Zarnik says, he refused to obey this order, that's the order coming directly from the Pope, and continued to celebrate Mass, administer the sacraments, and pass the time with his mistress. According to the diary of Vicar and the statements of the seers, Our Lady mentioned 13 times that he is innocent and that the bishop is wrong. They were involved in sexual hanky-panky too. Uh, none got pregnant, and uh, they had been suspended by their, uh, by their order, not by the bishop, and they were still administering the sacraments. Now, this is serious business. You know, this is playing around with sacraments, which is not, you, no church, we, the church can't allow this kind of stuff. So they're going on in re direct rebellion against the bishop, and then suddenly uh, Vitska claims that the Blessed Mother appeared not once, but a number of times, and said the, ble uh, the, the, the suspended priests are right and the bishop's wrong. Now, this is impossible. This is theologically impossible, and this is why Zanich changed his mind. He said, this cannot be the Blessed Mother if this is the type of messages we're getting. Now, Monsignor Zanich, he can hardly be challenged when he insists that Our Lady would certainly not have stated on 13 occasions that this scandalous priest was innocent and that the bishop of the diocese was in the wrong. The seers must, therefore, have been lying in attributing such statements to the Mother of God. Uh, they evidently, they did so at the behest of their Franciscan uh, mentors who, who were manipulating them. Uh, I, I can give you some, what they claim were, were the very words of Our Lady on the subject of this priest. They, 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 they said, Our Lady said, the bishop is to blame for the disorder in Herzegovina. Father Ivica Vago is not to blame. Right. If they expel him from the Franciscan order, may he remain courageous. Ivica is innocent. It's never appropriate for someone who has taken a vow of celibacy to have sexual intercourse, no. And even less appropriate with uh, another person who has taken a uh, vow of celibacy. No, so it's always wrong. On April 21st, 1988, one of the alleged seers, Maria Pavlovich, quoted the Blessed Mother authorizing Tomislav Vlasic to establish a bizarre community in Parma, Italy, where young men and women were to live and work together. This caused a scandal in the corridors of the Vatican and was throwing doubt on Maria's credibility as a supposed visionary. Maria later distanced herself from Vlasic with a surprise announcement issued in both Italian and Croatian on July the 11th, 1988. In it, she stated, My first declaration does not correspond to the truth. I have never asked the Madonna for any approval for the community begun by Father Tomislav Vlasic. 
She then went on to imply that Tomislav Vlasic coaxed her into making the statement and misquoting the Blessed Mother. On the weight of this, the Vatican directly ordered Vlasic back to Yugoslavia and banned his community. An anonymous source has stated that the men and women of this community were involved in more than simply living and praying together. Sixteen years after the first alleged apparition in Medjugorje, it is the responsibility of their new spiritual advisor, Slavko Barbarish, to manage the engagements of these worldwide religious celebrities. A difficult task when you consider that they now refuse to cooperate with each other and are very rarely seen at Medjugorje, as most of them now live abroad. There are now many pilgrimages in a number of countries devoted to followers of the Medjugorje cult. One such regular engagement being this one, which takes place every summer at the Friary in Kent, England. In the summer of 1996, Ivan attended. Will you come back to be with us next August bank holiday? Not sigo no dal ne sam. Okay, I'll be back sure next year, but I won't be alone. Yet in 1997, Ivan was politely asked by a bishop in England not to attend the gathering in Kent during the summer this year. This is not the first time a prophecy from Ivan's lips has proven fruitless. Ivan stated to the investigating commission that the Madonna had told him that a sign would appear during the six months after her first appearance in Medjugorje. Sixteen years on, the world still awaits this sign. On another occasion, Ivan quoted the Blessed Mother as stating that he would become a priest. Yet since then, he has been expelled from two seminaries, the last one being Dubrovnik, due to poor grades. In 1994, Ivan married the former Miss Massachusetts, Lorene Murphy, whom he married in Boston. One is forced to wonder how the two communicate, since Ivan is apparently unable to address English-speaking crowds without first using a translator. And on the day of his wedding, Ivan apparently witnessed an apparition of Our Lady, who now purportedly follows him around the world. A television crew was at Kent this year, commissioned by Channel 4 to produce a documentary for the series Dispatches, which is not known for producing complementary material, but for uncovering scandals. This particular documentary crew were following up on information provided to them by the producers of this programme. As for the messages allegedly provided by the Blessed Mother... And uh, they now claim to have spoken to Our Lady on 24,000 occasions, which is you know, a little more than the three, which uh, she, she is supposed to have originally promised them. It's one of the signs that it is not authentic is that it has lasted this long. All the people who have written about this in the church say they can't go on for, they can't go on for a long time. It's a sign that it's phony if it goes on for a long time. Fatima was six messages over the basically six-month period. Lords, I think, was even fewer. If it goes on 16 years, look, the, who, the Blessed Mother didn't have this much to say in the Bible. Author Charlie Toy quotes the current spiritual advisor of the alleged seers, Father Slavko, as saying that nothing new is in the messages, but that each of the successive messages merely paraphrase earlier ones. The present messages, however, come from Maria Pavlovich, who lives in Italy. They are then transmitted from the Church of St. James via the internet by so-called Sister Emmanuel, who is actually an imposter without a faculty in Medjugorje. During the Yugoslavian Civil War, both the Franciscans and the Visionaries campaigned worldwide, raising funds in the name of relief. From the United States alone, tens of millions of dollars were donated to them. The details of the distribution of this money remains to this day a mystery. It is clear that both the Catholic Church and the present Bishop of Mostar do not accept the reports of occurrences in Medjugorje as supernatural. The official statement from Bishop Parrish goes as follows. There is no fact, argument, affirmation or miracle. When he endeavours to visit the parish of St. James at Medjugorje, he states, there are disorders there. Franciscan priests there with no canonical mission. Religious communities have been established without permission. It creates confusion and division, and not simply in its own diocese. Bishop Parrish made these statements in October of 1994 at the Synod of Bishops and in the presence of the Holy Father. Despite these announcements, bishops, tour operators and pilgrims 
choose to ignore his ruling and continue to promote this cult. In Rome, we obtained this announcement issued from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith dated 23rd of March, 1997, in which it states, From what has been said, it follows that official pilgrimages to Medjugorje, representing it as a place of authentic Marian apparitions, must not be organized, either on a parish or a diocesan level, because this would be a contradiction of what has been affirmed by the bishops of the ex-Yugoslavia in their previously cited declaration. And as for the opinion of Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger from the Vatican, in spite of this decision, many Catholics still consider the alleged apparitions at Medjugorje genuine. How Catholic are they?